Do you want to increase your chances of winning your next game of Twilight Imperium? And I assume you're going to play as the Federation of Sol. The Federation of Sol is an awesome faction to play when it comes to ground combat. Since you have a unit upgrade called the Spec Ops 2, they hit on a 7 instead of an 8, making you so much stronger than all the other infantry in the game. Besides that, you start with an advanced carrier that has a capacity of 6 instead of 4, and you can upgrade that to the advanced carrier 2 that has a capacity of 8 instead of 6. And as the only carrier in the game, it will have the sustained damage ability. Besides the unit upgrades, you have the Orbital Drop faction ability that gives you the option to spend one command counter from your strategy pool, and then you can place two infantry on any planet that you control, making it super easy for you to put infantry out in the front line. All right, let's sit down at the table and look at your home system and your map slice. And as you can see, you have your home system here and your map slice is indicated by the white lines. As I mentioned in the introduction, you want to gain control of three systems in your first round. And the three systems uh, I would take control of on this map would be this, this, and this. And the reason for, for this one out here is that to unlock your commander, you will need to have 12 resources. And if we look at uh, your slice, your home system got 4, 6, 8, 12, and 11. So that's not enough to unlock your commander. So I would gain control of Evera out here before uh, the white player gets to take it, because it's much easier for you to defend the planet than it is to gain control of it. So besides the resources, what else to look for? Well, here we got a blue tech skip out on this planet. We can use that later in the game to get, for instance, fleet logistics or light wave deflectors. We also got a red tech skip here, but we really don't need that. We will probably not go into the red tech path anyway. And be besides the resources, you also want to get as much influence as possible so that you can buy more command counters and do more orbital dropping. Let's have a look at our home system and starting units. And as you can see, we start with two carriers, five infantry, three fighters, and one destroyer. And with these units, you can easily just gain control of the first two systems in the first round, like this. Then on your second turn, you can simply grab the other system. But then later in the game, I will show you how you can actually get more units and also gain control of Ivera out here. All right, let's talk about strategy cards. I got four options for you. My first pick would be the technology card, and my second pick would be the warfare card. And I will go through these two in more details in the next segment of the video, so I'll skip them for now. My third choice would be the trade strategy card, and that's because you are a four commodity faction. So besides the three trade goods you gain from the card, then you can easily earn three more trade goods by trading two of those commodities with one of your neighbors, or if you're lucky, all four commodities for six trade goods. But of course, you are then dependent on your neighbors to do the trades with you. And my fourth pick would be leadership, where you get three more command counters. You probably won't be able to buy any more than that, but you can use those extra command counters to do more orbital dropping, defending your slice even further or you can do a few more tactical actions in the next round. All right, let's have a look at how the first round can look like. This is a six player game, but we will only focus on the three players down here at the bottom of the board. So we got the leadership player here in the white corner and the warfare player in the purple corner. And they start the game. So the leadership player probably gains control of this system here and then eventually gets to be the warfare player gains control of Hope's End, and now it gets to be our turn. And we, since we have the technology strategy card, we can actually consider using it as our very first action, because a lot of the other players won't have access to full resources right from the beginning of the game. Their home systems simply don't have it, and in this way we can stall them out on the technology. So let's just play that and then research Gravity Drive as our very first action. Then we pass the turn along, 
and the leadership player probably gains control of this system here and the warfare player can control of this system out here and it gets to be us again so let's just use gravity drive immediately so we activate out here bring a carrier along two infantry and a couple of fighters and then we pass the turn along and everybody else takes their turns and it gets to be us again so we activate out here and gain control of these systems or these planets we pass the turn along and maybe the leadership player decides to play that card and we don't have enough influence and we want to save the resources to build these units so we don't buy any command counters right now and the warfare player is also running out of actions so we place the warfare strategy card and we decide to do the secondary of that so we can build units in our home system we pay one command counter to do so and we build two more infantry and a carrier and pay the four resources three for the carrier two for the infantry and now it gets to be our turn now we can excavate out here fly the carrier out there like so and we pass the turn along and eventually it gets to be our turn again and let's just use the second strategy token here on orbital dropping an action spend one token from your strategy pool to place two infantry from your reinforcements on one planet you control so let's do that and let's just put them here so that whenever round two starts and we can actually move this carrier again then we have the infantry we need to gain control of this system out here what we have achieved now is gaining control of our three systems we have researched the tech and we have built three units in our home system we have also dropped two more infantry to the front line and since we have 12 resources we got four six eight ten thirteen resources which is more than the 12 we need to unlock our commander we can do that now and it says at the start of a ground combat on a planet you control you may place one infantry from your reinforcements on that planet so all of a sudden all your planets are more protected now just remember to put that infantry on the planet before the ground combat starts so if you get the warfare strategy card then you get three systems without building any more units in your home system so the way you do that is that you move one of your carriers again but before you do that it's a good idea to orbital drop two more infantry on a planet in that system where the carrier is so when it gets to be your turn and you can play the warfare strategy card then you remove the command counter from that system and you can put it back into the tactical pool for instance so that you unlock the system and then on your third turn you can activate on Nevera move the carrier, the two new infantry, one fighter and one destroyer to that system, so you can both get it and defend it. And this is how you can gain control of three systems in the first round using the Warfare Strategy card. Alright, let's have a look at technologies. As I see it, you have two paths you can go down. The first one is the blue one, where you start with Antimars Deflectors, and the second one is the green one, where you start with Neuro Motivator. In either case, I would always suggest you to research Gravity Drive to help your carriers with a little more flexibility. But going down the blue path will also get you closer to your faction unit upgrade, the Advanced Carrier 2, which has a capacity of 8 instead of 6, and it can move two systems instead of one, and it also got sustained damage. So this is actually the best carrier in the game. But it's up to you to decide whether you actually need this unit upgrade or not, because remember, there are only two reasons to research technology. One is if it can help you in a battle you know, on the board, and the other reason is if it gets you closer to scoring a public or secret objective. And I found these two uh, objectives. The first one is this public one. It says own two unit upgrade technologies. Then it of course would make perfectly sense to upgrade your carriers to this. And you can also research your other faction unit upgrade, which is the Spec Ops 2. And that rolls on a 6, or hits on a 6, just like all the mechs do. But these only costs half a trade good or half a resource for each, so they are much cheaper. 
and you actually get to roll a die as well. So you actually get a chance to revive your unit. You could also get the secret objective that says adapt new strategies, own two faction technologies. And if you have researched those two, then you can score this secret objective. But if you continue in the blue line here, if you get gravity drive, and maybe you also decide to research the advanced carrier too, but you can also go further to, for instance, fleet logistics. During each of your turns of the action phase, you may perform two actions instead of one. So that can be two tactical actions or one tactical action and play an action card, or you can do a, an orbital drop. So you ba basically get to two, two actions, which makes you very versatile uh, later in the game. And you can also finally get to the light wave deflector, which is the top tier tech in the blue tech tree. Your ships can move through systems that contain other players' ships. So all of a sudden now the players cannot just build a huge fleet in the system adjacent to their home system. Now they actually need to protect their home system with fleets as well. Otherwise you can just fly through them. So that was the blue tech tree. Then we have the green one. You start with neural motivator. During the status phase, draw two action cards instead of one, which is pretty good. What I would try to strive for in the green tech tree is to get hypermetabolism. It says during the status phase, gain three command tokens instead of two. And that is basically one more free orbital drop for you, where you can place infantry on the front line somewhere. But if you want to go for this technology, then you almost certainly need a green tech skip planet in your slice that you have easy access to because you will not be able to get it in round one and this tech is one technology you should get as early as possible so that you get the most benefit from it and the reason why you can't get it in round one is that whenever you gain control of a new planet the planet is exhausted and for you to use the green tech skip then you would have to to unexhaust it and it's only unexhausted starting from round two so when you are in round two you can exhaust that planet without spending the influence on anything and then you get to skip one green technology as you can see it requires two and you only have one so you can use this planet as the skip and then you can get hyper metabolism in round two but if you really want this technology and you don't have a green tech skip planet then as an alternative you could research daxif animators it says after you win a ground combat you may place one infantry from your reinforcements on that planet and that will simply make your defense of planets even stronger. And the green tech tree also leads to your other faction unit upgrade, the Spec Ops 2, which I just explained before. My last tips for you, if you decide to play as the Federation of Sol, is one, to spread thin during round one and round two, and remember to defend your exposed planets using orbital drop. Two, your strength lies in ground combat due to your stronger infantry and your agent and commander and remember your space fleets don't have any special abilities that helps you in combat and number three you can go for megatol rex for the six influence that equals two command counters whenever leadership is played and those two command counters is potentially two extra orbital drops all right guys that was it i hope you liked the video and if you did please click the like button if you want to see how the hero works for the Federation of Saw, you can watch this video here. And lastly, I wish you best of luck in your next game, and I hope that you win.